apologize for running just a few minutes late. But I have the time at 736. So I will call the public hearing and regular business meeting of the mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, Monday, January the 8th, 2024 to order. Good evening, everyone, and happy new year. Our first meeting of the year. Uh, we're gonna start with the invocation to be uh, given to us by David Adair from St. Oliver Plunkett Church. David, up here, thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering tonight. We ask for your grace and wisdom to conduct ourselves with respect and good order and in, in gratitude for the pr privilege to do so. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. And now we'll, if you'll please stand for the pledge to be led by Mayor Pro Tem Todd Warner. Thank you, and under ceremonial matters, we have a proclamation. Proclamation 2024-01, recognition of St. Oliver Plunkett Catholic Church winning best tree for, with the most donated items at the eighth annual Snellville Festival of Trees 2023. Whereas the eighth annual Festival of Trees was created by Experience Snellville to allow business owners, churches, schools, and residents the opportunity to showcase their Christmas trees in Snellville City Hall while helping the community give hunger the boot. And whereas all non-perishable food items, toiletries, toys, and monetary donations were accepted and placed under the tree of choice with each item registering as a vote. All non-perishable items were donated to the Southeast Gwinnett Cooperative Ministry, and all toys were donated to Toys for Tots. And whereas 10 entries displayed trees throughout the halls of City Hall with a combined effort of 9,926 donations in a four-week period. St. Oliver Plunkett Catholic Church Vocation Ministry Tree received 4,881 votes, receiving the award for best tree. And whereas St. Oliver Plunkett Catholic Church parishioners donated generously with a spirit of giving back to the community, blue Advent bags filled the halls of City Hall on a regular basis throughout the eighth annual Festival of Trees. Therefore, I, Barbara Bender, Mayor of the City of Snellville, Georgia, where everybody's proud to be somebody, do hereby join with our City Council, Experience Snellville, and the citizens of Snellville to recognize the faithful servants of St. Oliver Plunkett Catholic Church, who are called to action by faithful giving and joyful witness to the community for their outstanding support in the 8th Annual Snellville Festival of Trees proclaimed this eighth day of January, 2024. And we've got some members from St. Oliver's, if you'll come forward and we'll receive the proclamation. And if I may say just something quick, Barbara. Um, I know some other folks are here too, and we're gonna um, present St. Oliver's first, and then I'll call the other uh, folks that are here representing their tree tonight, and we'll do a group picture. But I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who um, was part of this giving back because we did uh, we did a couple hundred more items than last year, and it was just uh, amazing. So the co-op really appreciated it. We filled up like four of the big uh, Walt trucks from the co-op, filled them up. So it was uh, awesome. Thank you, everybody, for your support.
So we have we have the Lions Club. If you want to come up next, oh, let's do a group shot. Let's keep you all up here. Okay. And we're going to do a group okay. shot of everybody. Okay. okay. Is that if, if she wants to come up too? You want to come up too, Joey? Yeah, we're going to do a group picture. We'll do a group picture. So I'm going to present that to you, and then we'll do a group picture with everybody. Okay. okay? Fine. Thank you. Okay, we've got the American Legion, Auxiliary Post 232. Cricket? The Historical Society. Oh, you're, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Yes. Okay, Miss Cricket, here you go. Thank you so much. And if you'll join the crowd. And we have the Storm of Historical Society. And thank you so thank much. You. Is anybody here? Uh, we've got the Boy Scout troop too. Come on up. <laughs> Is anybody else here representing a Christmas tree from any other group? Okay. And this is Boy Scout Pack 526, and we'll do a group photo. Okay, guys. Everybody kind of squeeze on in. Those with the flags. Mary. Happy face. Okay, you ready? Did you want to? I can't really get the ladies on the end, though. But <laughs> no, no, those ladies, the council women. There we go. That'll work. All right. Everybody, look, smile, and one more. Thank you. So in the awards, you know, uh, the, in the excitement of, of winning the best tree and participating in the, the festival, um, the, the goal of it is to raise donations for the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op. And we all know that Thanksgiving, you know, November, December are very tough times for, um, for the co-op and for them keeping their, their shelves stocked. And so um, it's, it's really, this is a big boost to them. And since Dave Emanuel is not here, I will be the one to remind you all that, that hunger is a 24-7, 365 days a year that people are struggling with food insecurities, and especially now in the times of inflation that we have. Um, so please consider the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op. If you're out and something, you got a good sale, there's a collection box that's always in the hallway there at City Hall. We'd be happy to, if you want to place your donations there, be happy to take those over to the co-op. And now we will move on to the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the December 11, 2023 minutes. There's a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. Under invited guests, we have, I'm happy to present Battalion Chief Tommy Rutledge, an old Snelva boy. He's going to present to us about the Gwinnett County Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Alarm Programs. All right, Mayor, thank you uh, to the, the Mayor, Mayor Bender, to our City Council, to our City staff, and to the men and women that make up and the children that make up all of Snellville, Georgia. Thank you on behalf of Fire Chief Fred Cephas, our Fire Marshal Matthew Phillips, and the great men and women of Fire Station Number 12. Thank you for allowing us to come and talk a little bit tonight 
about one of our programs. We offer many programs through fire and emergency services. One of those is our residential fire safety program. And I'll start tonight by asking those in the audience and in the council chamber, who in here by show of hands has experienced a serious fire? If you'll raise your hand. All right, some of you have, uh, most of you have not. So if by virtue of the fact that I have a captivated topic, I should have everybody's attention because fire is a serious matter. Fire doesn't discriminate against time, against people, or against place. In fact, fires happen anytime, anywhere, and to anybody. And in fact, right now, somewhere in the United States, somewhere in the state of Georgia, and somewhere in Gwinnett County, Georgia, and in the city of Snellville, a fire truck is responding to an emergency. Whether it be a medical emergency, or a fire, or a hazardous materials incident, our Fire and Emergency Services Department in Gwinnett County and in the Snellville area stays busy. You hear the sirens in the middle of the day, you hear them in the middle of the night, sometimes they wake you up. We have a busy Fire and Emergency Services Department. Our goal is not just to be responsive when someone calls 911, but it's also to be proactive. And being proactive means that we have a speakers bureau. We have fire educators along with firefighters that go out into the community and teach public education. And one of our proud programs and one of our most robust programs is our residential fire safety program. A lot of people don't know what to expect when a fire breaks out. They don't know that, first of all, a fire is dark. Smoke makes a fire dark. That's why escape plans are so important. They don't realize that fire is hot. Now we've all touched a hot pan, burned the tip of our finger, but imagine that same heat engulfing your entire body all at once. Fire is hot. It can be several hundred degrees at the ceiling, two or three hundred degrees at head level, and about 90 to 100 degrees on the floor during a fire in the first two or three minutes. If you remember back in elementary school, the firefighters told you to crawl low under smoke when the firefighters visited that school. We tell adults the same thing, crawl low under smoke. What we find in most house fires is that people in their homes don't have working smoke alarms. Raise your hand if you have a smoke alarm on every level of your home. Audience, the fire service in the United States and right here in Gwinnett County, Georgia, recommend a smoke alarm, a working smoke alarm, on every level of the home and one inside each of the bedrooms where someone sleeps. In fact, most fatal fires happen in the home and most fatal fires happen at night. They catch us off guard when we're asleep. Most people don't realize that when a human being is asleep, not when you're falling asleep, not when you're waking up, but when you are truly asleep, you lose your sense of smell. Did anybody know that already tonight? If not, that's brand new information. A person doesn't smell in their sleep. That's why the noise of a smoke alarm is your first line of defense in your home. Working smoke alarms save lives. So important that firefighters carry them on the fire trucks. And if we respond to a medical emergency in your home or any type of call into your residence, one of the things they're going to do while they're there after the patient's transported or after the situation is under control is they're gonna ask you, can we check your smoke alarm? And they're gonna be able to tell you if your smoke alarm is out of date. One way to tell is if your smoke alarm is no longer white, it's yellow like the wall behind you is probably older than 10 years and should be replaced. Smoke alarms in a home have a lifespan of about 10 years and they have to be replaced. Anything after 10 years may or may not operate and detect smoke in a fire. We also understand that not only do we not smell and smoke alarms are our first line of defense, but having an escape plan, knowing what to do when that smoke alarm goes off it's not collect valuables. It's not run around the house and, and in a panic. It's wake everybody up and get everybody out. Know the two ways out. That can be a door or a window. And because the fire service understands that most people don't know what to do in case of fire and that the majority of homes don't have working smoke alarms, they're either out of date or the battery's been taken out because it was chirping or it went off when you were cooking in the kitchen most homes don't have working smoke alarms, so they carry them on the fire trucks. They'll put them up on an emergency response. But our educators go out every single day and they do talks, they do presentations to homeowners groups. 
If you have a homeowners association or a homeowners group or a civic group, we'd love to come out and talk about residential fire safety, but we also offer a home safety survey program. We offer a program where we have educators and firefighters come out to your home. It takes about 30 minutes. It's free of charge, doesn't cost our residents anything for us to come out and check your home for what we call the common fire hazards or the common injury hazards in a home. It could be everything from an overloaded electrical outlet to a slip, trip, and fall hazard. The bag that you have before you that I, I passed out prior to the council meeting starting is that residential home safety survey bag that we give every resident. And you'll notice that it has information in there, but it also has tools to use in the kitchen because most home fires occur in the kitchen. They're cooking related, food on the stove unattended or a grease fire, quickly followed by candle fires and careless smoking fires as well. But we do a home safety survey program where we come out and check your home for those common fire hazards and those injury prevention hazards. We try to talk to the resident, educate them on what they can do or, or what we can do even while we're there to help um, resolve that issue in their home. And before we leave, we install free carbon monoxide alarm and a free smoke alarm, one in the sleeping area, outside in the hallway, outside the bedrooms, just to get the resident started. And we'll install one in the sleeping area of the home. So we're trying to get the resident started by having a smoke alarm in the common areas of the home and a carbon monoxide alarm in those common areas. It doesn't cost our residents, it doesn't cost the residents of the city of Snellville anything to have the fire department come out and do that to give our residents peace of mind to know that their home is fire safe and while we have them on supply we'll also provide a portable fire extinguisher so that that home is equipped with an extinguisher in case of a fire so that they can douse a small fire before the fire department arrives a carbon monoxide alarm and a smoke alarm along with that that bag and inside that bag you'll see an oven mitt you'll see a uh, what we call a ruler but it really is an oven stick and you'll see a spatula, all the things you need to keep or prevent a burn injury while you're in the kitchen is in that bag. And that's part of the information that we're passing out uh, to our citizens. But we get inside the residence, we interact with them, we try to find out what are their needs. And there are many homes where there are individuals with disabilities, there are elderly people in the home, there are small children in the home that either can't self-preservate or don't know what to do when a fire breaks out. So we're getting that information out there. And so I want to say in closing, thank you to the city council. Thank you to the mayor. Thank you to the staff for making fire safety important and inviting us to come out and do a presentation. And um, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Chief Rutledge, I appreciate your being here tonight. And I had um, I signed up for the free safety audit. And I think it was about a year ago that two um, firemen came out to the house. We went through the house. They explained everything. They checked my smoke alarms. They checked. We had a fire extinguisher in our kitchen, and so they checked to make sure that was all still in date. And uh, they left me with a carbon monoxide monitor because we didn't have one of those. So it was a great service. Um, they really gave you some great tips while they were while they were there uh, with me on what to do if you had a fire in the oven and um, all of that. So very wor well worth the time and uh, great service that our fire department provides. So thank you so much for all you do. So now we have no committee or department report, so we'll move to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve tonight's agenda, January 8th, 2024, with one additional item under new business, item G, resolution 2024-03, consideration and action on the extension of a moratorium to study the regulation of medical cannabis dispensaries. Okay, there's a... Motion to approve the agenda with one addition. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. The agenda is approved. We have nothing under public hearing or consent agenda or old business, so we'll move to new business. And we'll start with the, uh, my nomination and confirmation of two court associate judges. So what we'll, 
I'll, we'll go ahead and do the uh, nomination and confirmation votes for both, and then I'll step down and we'll, we'll, we'll um, swear in our new judges. So first I would like to nominate Municipal Court Associate Judge Ron, is it Ron? Ron. Ron Gatewood. That's my nomination. I ask for council's confirmation. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. And also I would like to nominate Municipal Court Associate Judge Jennifer White. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. So if you guys can join me up front, we will swear you in.
All right, now we will move to item C. We have a resolution 2024-01, consideration and action on local amendment to Georgia minimum standard plumbing code, Metro Water District water efficiency code requirements. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, before you, we just have a resolution to submit some state required code amendments to uh, chapter 300 buildings of the Snellville United um, or the UDO Unified Development Code and deals with specifically uh, any kind of plumbing fixtures and flow rates that have been adopted by the state to be reduced uh, deals with irrigation, household appliances, commercial appliances and other systems that uh, must conform to the state standards in order for us to do that we have to send the code to the state first that we plan on amending and that's what this action is tonight we recommend approval thank you jason any comments or questions by council nope. then i will entertain a motion Madam Mayor, make a motion that we approve resolution 24-01, the local amendment to the Georgia minimum water, minimum standard plumbing code of the Metro Water District efficiency code requirements. There is a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. Now we have item D, consideration and action on resolution 2024-02, City of Civility. Uh, the City of Civility is a program that was instituted by the Georgia Municipal Association about two years ago. Um, we as a city adopted this resolution back in September, I think, and with the new council members coming on, we wanted to go ahead and readopt the resolution. And um, I won't read this whole resolution, uh, and Melissa's going to actually read the pledge that we, we will all agree to, but essentially what the resolution is is doing is that we are we as a council and as a city are pledging to practice and promote civility in the city of Snellville um, we recognize that robust debate and the right to self-expression as protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution are fundamental rights and essential components of democratic self-governance we recognize that the public exchange of diverse ideas and viewpoints is necessary to the health of the community and the quality of governance in the municipality. As representatives of the community, we recognize our role in modeling open, free, and vigorous debate while maintaining the highest standards of civility, honesty, and mutual respect and how we execute our legal duties is on public display. And in that regard, we pledge that during public meetings, we will not engage in texting, sending email, or other actions that display a lack of concern or attention to the city's business. We also uh, feel it's our duty and responsibility that we foster respect, kindness, and thoughtfulness between city officials avoiding personal ill will which results in actions being used made in the best interest of residents and it also presents us an opportunity to set a positive example of conduct and promote thoughtful debate and discussion of legislative issues resulting in better public policy and a more informed electorate while also encouraging civil behavior between residents and we pledge wherever possible I'm sorry, let me read that again because that didn't sound right. Civility between city officials is possible if each member of the elected body remembers that they represent not only themselves, but the constituents of their district and city. And that in order to publicly declare our commitment to civil discourse and to express its concern for the common good and well-being of all citizens, the city council is determined to adopt this resolution.
Um, now, for, now, therefore, be it resolved as follows. I can pass it down. We'll each, what we were going to do, why there's a little confusion here, is we were going to have Melissa stand up and read through this um, so that we can take the pledge. And that's not really going to work because we need to pass the resolution and we need to read the resolution as we pass it. So uh, we'll pass it down and let everybody I, I, read. I have my copy okay. here, so I'll read section one. The city of Snellville pledges to practice and promote civility within the governing body as a means of conducting legislative duties and responsibilities. Section two, the elected officials of the city council enact this civility pledge to build a stronger and more prosperous community by advocating for civil engagement, respecting others and their viewpoints, and finding solutions for the betterment of the city of Snellville. Section three, this pledge strives to ensure that all communication be open, honest, and transparent as this is vital for cultivating trust and relationships. Now I'll also read section four. This pledge strives to show courtesy by treating all colleagues, staffs and staff and members of the public in a professional and respectful manner, whether in person, online, or in written communication, especially when we disagree. Well, I hope my voice will hold out for this. This pledge strives to ensure mutual respect to achieve to achieve municipal goals, recognizing that patience, tolerance, and civility are imperative to success and demonstrates the council's commitment to respect different opinions by inviting and inviting and and uh, considering different perspectives, allowing space for ideas to be expressed debated, opposed, and clarified in a constructive manner. Section six, this pledge demonstrates our commitment against violence and incivility in all their forms, whenever and wherever they occur in all our meetings and interactions. In section seven, the city of Snellville expects, expects members of the public to be civil in its discussion of matters under consideration by and before the city council with elected officials, staff, and each other. And this would be adopted this day, January 8th, 2024. So that is the resolution and the pledge as read out by each of the council members. So I will uh, call for the vote, or I guess we need a motion first. Madam Mayor, make a motion that we adopt Resolution 2024-02, pledging to practice and promote civility in the city of Snellville. There is a motion to approve. Is there a second? second. There is a no motion and a second. Any comments by council? Okay, then I will call for the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. And now we'll move on to item E, consideration and action on approval of a contract for the city manager. I think most of you uh, know that our city manager of 12 years, Butch Sanders, retired. His official last day was last Thursday. Um, I did call him on Friday <laughs> just to uh, make sure that he stuck to his promise that he would answer my call and uh, to make sure that his first day of retirement was going well. Um, so he retired, and uh, so we have promoted um, Matthew Pepper to city manager. Uh, Matt has been our assistant city manager for the past two and a half years, so he's been working under Butch 
soaking up all of his experience and knowledge like a sponge. Um, and Matt comes to us from the city of Oxford where he was the city manager for three years, was it four years at the city of Oxford uh, down near Covington. So we're very excited to have Matt taking over uh, the helm uh, here for the city employees and uh, look forward to working with you. And we have a little business of the contract to approve tonight. So is there a motion? on the contract. Motion to approve the contract for the city manager. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. I heard Carrie jump in there first. So we have a motion and a second to approve the contract for the city manager. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. Congratulations, Matt. And now, uh, last but not least, we have consideration and action on election of the mayor pro tem. Uh, mayor pro tem. This is something by our charter is done every uh, first of January, first meeting in January, and the council nominates and votes on uh, a council member to be the mayor pro tem, which is essentially a vice mayor that would stand in for me if uh, I was not here. So is there a motion? Motion to nominate Todd Warner to continue on as mayor pro tem. There's a motion to have Todd Warner continue. Is there a second? second. There is a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, got too many things passing in front of me here. Okay, and then we did in the approval of the agenda, we did add item G. This is resolution 2024-03. It's a resolution to provide for an extension of time to study the changes necessary to the Unified Development Ordinance of the City of Snellville related to the regulation of medical cannabis dispensaries. Um, we've had this moratorium in place since July 10th and the state is still working out issues. So we are putting on, we're just extending our moratorium um, here until uh, for another six months hoping that the state will get all of their issues resolved here in the um, General Assembly session that's coming up. Uh, so is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution 2024-03 as, as, um, as described by the mayor. <laughs> there is a motion to approve, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second to extend the moratorium. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. So that moratorium is extended for another six months. With that, that ends all of our regular business. So we will move on to council reports and we'll start with council member Norman Carter. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to echo a comment by the, uh, the mayor made earlier about the Southeast Gwinnett uh, Co-op. I had a chance to visit there about two weeks, as I, two weeks ago as I tried to step in for Dave Emanuel. Um, fantastic uh, visit I had there. I, I wish all of you could, uh, could go there. I spoke to Director Laura Drake this morning. Um, to let her know that our cupboard was overflowing. Uh, she was ecstatic as they were, um, their stock had been severely depleted because of the holidays. So I'd just like to thank everyone for your contributions to uh, give hunger the boot, both your financial and uh, your, your goods. Thank you very much. Thank you, Norman. And we'll go to Council Member Carrie Hetherington. 
Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody had a great holiday season. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. Um, just want to say really looking forward now that the holidays are over, we can jump in and really get it into the, the work of council um, and what we have to do here and how we can serve you. And I'm looking forward to continue learning, looking forward to our retreat in a couple of weeks um, to keep learning how we can better serve you. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you, Carrie. And then we'll go to council member Christy Linsky. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, please remember that Monday next week is the Dr. King holiday. Um, city offices will be closed and it is our hope that it's actually going to be a day of service for everyone, not a day off, but a day on. The Snellville Youth Commission is going to model this. Actually, they're going to be uh, involved in a service project on Saturday the 14th um, with one of our local nursing homes. And on Monday the 15th, we're going to be taking uh, the Youth Commission down to the King Center. And please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And hopefully it will be a great, safe experience with an amazing learning um, opportunity. Thank you. I had thoughts. Okay. I hear there's a game tonight. So I'll stop there. Are you done? I'm done. You're all done. Council Member Gretchen Schultz. I'm not going to burden you with my voice tonight to give a report, but thank you for being here. And Mayor Pro Tem Todd Warner. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my fellow council members and mayor for uh, allowing me to be your mayor pro tem for another year. It means a lot to me. And uh, in my duties as mayor pro tem, I have the opportunity to sit in with the mayor on a number of meetings that um, are usually really, really informative. This last Wednesday, we went to... Uh, the Gwinnett Municipal Association's meeting that had all of, well, had some of the Gwinnett State Delegation in attendance. So we were able to talk about upcoming issues that were going to be addressed by the General Assembly. And we were actually able to talk to the, uh, the chair of the Gwinnett Delegation um, about some issues that weren't even on their radar, um, talking about things that will make the public safer without infringing on our freedoms. Um, I always find that a great meeting um, and I look forward to them being very productive. That would be nice. And uh, we also had our New Year's conversation with our uh, federal representative, Lucy McBath, on month, no. Friday. Friday, yeah, boy. Um, and if you are not aware, uh, with the new, newly updated uh, legislative map, she will no longer um, be our congresswoman after the next election cycle. And um, even though I may disagree with her on many items that come across the national scene, she has been a champion for us locally here in the city and in the county, um, second to none. And I've, I've had the pleasure of working with four different uh, congressmen from Linder to Underwood to, um, I always mess her name up, Carolyn Bordeaux. Um, but Lucy McBath and her staff have always been uh, just incredibly involved in making sure that Snellville and Gwinnett County have a seat at the table, have a opportunity for any federal funds um, that are available. And she makes sure that we are well informed. And I really appreciate that. Um, and again, it's my honor to serve you and it's my honor to serve this body. So thank you very much. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. And I've just got a couple of things. Um, as Gretchen will attest, it is flu and COVID season. She doesn't have either that we're aware of, that this is just a very bad cold for her. Um, but it is out there. 
I've had a lot of friends and, and family members who have come down with the flu or COVID here in the last couple of weeks. So please just do what we all know we need to do. Make sure you're washing your hands, use hand sanitizer, stay away from, uh, you know, try not to be in too many big groups and, um, and stay home when you're not feeling good. Um, did want to mention on Friday morning, South Gwinnett High School has got the honor to welcome the, the West Point Leadership Ethics and Diversity in STEM workshop. They will have um, quite a few cadets coming down from West Point um, Military Academy. And so they're running, a, it's like a workshop or a convention kind of workshop all day with about 100 of the students there. Um, so we're very, very excited in, uh, to see this honor come to South Gwinnett. So they are doing a little program first thing in the morning uh, that I'll be attending there. And I think a few other council members might be, might be attending as well. Um, also, a couple of days ago, I had the, uh, um, I was invited to tour the Partnership Against Domestic Violence uh, shelter that's here in Gwinnett County and uh, a pretty impressive place and being able to talk with the CEO and several of the, the uh, women there that, that run that facility. Um, they, can, they have 45 beds there. They don't have an age restriction. There's a lot of these types of shelters that if you have a son with you, a child that's 18 or older male, they're not allowed in the shelter. And that keeps some people from seeking help. And so they don't have an age restriction on that. Um, they've had people come to the shelter with an elderly parent with them as well. Um, as well as small children. So it's really a fabulous organization and the work that they do really, really hits you in the heart when uh, people are in such a world of hurt and, um, and need that place to go, that place of safety. Um, so, and they are always looking for donations as well. They need um, gently used clothing for people who arrive at the shelter with nothing. They have different rooms. They have rooms for baby clothes, um, toys, um, women's clothes, uh, some men's clothes, uh, but they're always in need of personal item, you know, personal toiletry items and things like that. Um, so please consider them as far as donations and everything go. They are nonprofit run on donations and um, again, a great, uh, a great shelter a great facility that we have here in Gwinnett County. And with that, I will close the mayor's report and open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to uh, speak, you can come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record and five minutes on one topic, please. Quiet group tonight. So I will close the public comment and entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I heard Carrie. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor with none opposed. So we are done. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Please Thank drive you. safely. There is a severe storm warning overnight tonight and into tomorrow. So please be careful. Mm -hmm.